The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour as we start off the show about flat on the S&P cash. Uh, we were talking in the den earlier this morning, and I think it uh, probably for those people that are weren't up at that time or uh, haven't been uh, in the markets that long. Um, margin calls are something that eh, once or twice a year you'll probably run into. Uh, most people, eh, most seasoned traders don't spend a lot of time uh, with margin, uh, although you have some, especially when uh, markets have been uh, just going up and up and up. And we saw a little bit of that when the market did break off the highs earlier in the year. But uh, the reality is most people end up losing a lot of money on it and they quit using margin and they go to options or futures or something where the risk is a little bit uh, better to find if there's a surprise, probably not as much in futures as options. Uh, but we certainly kind of uh, see those issues. Anyway, uh, margin calls are one of those things uh, where we actually have a little bit of wiggle room. And that wiggle room is uh, more of a guideline than a rule. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Yeah, that's it on margin calls. Uh, ideally, uh, if the market's moving down and against you, uh, if it's moving down, let's say medium speed or slower speed, your broker will call you and say, you can wire transfer money uh, to us now or we'll sell whatever we uh, need to to get you back uh, into the amount of cash you need in your account. And uh, it depends on how much it is. If you've got a big account, they'll call you. If not, the, they may email you. Uh, if they're worried about you and they think you're a flake, they will just liquidate whatever you have out on the other side, uh, assuming that uh, at least they won't be a big loser and that you'll go bankrupt on them. Of course, we saw that with Robinhood earlier this year. Many, many people uh, that had fairly extensive margins got wiped out, and Robinhood was on the hook for it. Uh, I haven't heard a lot whether or not they've gone after the individual investors for that. I suspect with as many legal cases as they have pending, they may not want to poke the bear too much on that. Uh, but anyway, let's go to uh, probably the most active uh, margin provider in the market. That's Interactive Brokers. You may see their ads where they actually offer margin rates at a third or have been adding uh, margin rates at about a third of what uh, most of the other, uh, like Ameritrade and those folks have. Uh, that is because they do go to a clientele that tends to be either higher uh, portfolio value, dollar value, and or um, boutique hedge funds. And these are the guys that probably double and triple down on being wrong and then the market moves against them even more. Uh, anyway, the idea is that they give you that time. Well, you don't always have that time. And, of course, the broker is on the hook for it. So what he wants to do is if he's at, at all thinking that you may have some problems, he'll just sell your position. He doesn't have to give you a call, doesn't have to do anything. Uh, if you check out the work uh, or the, uh, the documents you sign, uh, any kind of margin can be pulled at any time for any reason. Um, if they just don't like the cut of your jib, uh, they can sell you out and in a heartbeat. Normally, they will wait till 1030 or 230, especially if they have bigger customers that are like hedge funds and may have millions and millions of dollars. Um, they don't want to burn in too many bridges. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they, they think you're hedge fund is going belly up, uh, they will uh, sell you out in a New York second. 
the reason I bring this up is we're getting to the times um, that you see the market's got to pull back uh, and flat as we are. I suspect the reason why is many people uh, know that there is at least some, if not more, volume coming in from some of this forced selling. And you tend to see a low, uh, well, let me put it this way. The orders have to be pretty much taken care of by 230. Doesn't mean that you're going to get sold. But generally, you're going to get, I'm going to say 230, 245, maybe 250. That's kind of the first round. Then secondarily, um, a lot of the people that get warned are on the wrong side of the tr uh, tracks uh, on the trade will start having to uh, have brokers call them, like IBD, and saying, hey, you need to clean this up or we're going to clean it up for you. And what they'll do is they'll put in some market on closed orders. Yesterday, it's one of the first days in a long time uh, I ever saw uh, any announcements of an imbalance. Now, someone brought up $200 million, which is not much of an imbalance at all. Uh, you know, uh, billions and billions is kind of what you end up with. So I'm not exactly sure if that 200 million was right, uh, that someone brought it up and started talking about it. But again, that's another thing you need to look for is on these fast moving markets is any announcement of imbalances. Because if there's a lot more to sell than there is to buy, the market's going lower. And there isn't a damn thing you can do about it. Um, I always uh, remember uh, the story about Leslie, uh, uh, Larry Pezzavento and his boss and some technical analysis guru that uh, they had hired to come in. Uh, Larry tells us uh, about this a bit, but it's in the. Uh, uh, it, yeah, I'll think about it in a second. Anyway, the story goes that this guy comes in and he says, uh, yes, uh, beans will exactly stop at whatever it was, 10 cents or 15 cents or something, a bushel. And uh, he says that absolutely will not go any lower than that. So he get down to 15 cents. And uh, the head of the corporation picks up his phone. He says, sell 100,000 bushels. And it goes from 15 cents to 13 cents or something. And he says, uh, he drops the phone and he goes, uh, if I can do that, anybody can do that. And the moral of the story is that it doesn't matter what we know uh, or what we think we know. In this case, I think it was point and figure uh, for the story. And I'll put it in the den here if I can dig it up. But I think I've got it saved somewhere. Uh, anyway, it, it's a great story to let you know that no matter what you think of as a techno, uh, technical analyst, you need to know that all it takes is somebody else uh, that's got some weight behind them uh, that wants to sell at a low or wants to buy at a high. And we need to know... That we don't need, we can't really be really that truly uh, knowledgeable. We think that 15 cents may hold on a bushel of something, but we don't know. No one knows. Prices are made in the minds of men, not in the fields in the middle of the country. We'll be back in a minute. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 as we come back uh what is it? Uh, uh, and about three points as I said, uh, everybody's kind of waiting and holding their breath over the next probably 30, 45 minutes to uh, see if we get anything. And then, of course, uh, keep an eye uh, probably about 320, 315. You normally get imbalanced notices, and we could still see those. Uh, as we talked a little bit yesterday about it, uh, rail strike maybe on Friday. Uh, this would be incredibly significant, especially for uh, energy prices, uh, as a great deal of our gasoline uh, is moved by rail uh, now because uh, they made it uh, illegal to build any new pipelines. That adds about $2, maybe two fifty dollars a barrel uh, on uh, every barrel of, of crude here in the United States. Uh, but uh, there's some other stuff going on. I wrote about it this morning in the newsletter. We'll see how good I am on that prognostication. Uh, the other thing I think uh, many people are looking at, and of course uh, they were absolutely savaged yesterday. I say savaged. Uh, and that was uh, the mortgages uh, we found out today. Um, mortgage applications are down one third over a calendar year ago. And uh, my guess is uh, probably another two months, we're probably going to be down to 50%. Probably not too far. Uh, one of the things I always, you know, we never know how low a market's going to go. I'm not predicting uh, the end of the world anytime soon. Uh, but well, I will say that the biggest losses ever in Wall Street, going back to the 1929 uh, losses uh, in, uh, uh, on the street, uh, in the uh, massive crash, 80% uh, of uh, the money lost, uh, permanently lost in the market, uh, was lost in REITs in 1929, uh, pretty much uh, duplicated in the 80s, and once again, duplicated again in 2000, late 2007-2008. So, as a measure of wealth, uh, it's always a big deal. You want to keep your eye on it. Uh, and uh, the question is, how fast can we get inflation down? 
probably didn't do any good to have uh, Rose Garden celebrations of inflation on one of the worst days in the market uh, whatsoever. But uh, hey, who am I to tell somebody how to live their life? 877-927-6648. Okay. Um, let's see. What else I wanted to go to? Oh, I wanted to do a little history. Let's do that. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1959, the Soviet space probe Luna 2 crashes into the surface of the moon, becoming the first man-made object to reach the moon, as well as the first man-made object to reach any celestial body. Of course, this was the space race. Little did anybody know until about uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago uh, when documents were unsealed. Uh, but we had a president of at the time, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and he wanted very much uh, to have the Russians launch a satellite and put it over the United States. So they couldn't balk because uh, we had a giant plan to put uh, telescopes in those and aim them down at the Ruskies and see what they were doing. So he was uh, he was well uh, interested in letting them get kind of the early lead. Also, it would shock us into uh, getting off the can, which we probably could be use the same kind of shock once again uh, to get us moving here in, in the U.S. Uh, but uh, I, I thought that was very interesting that they uh, kept it very close to the vest. Uh, one of the gentlemen that actually had built a satellite. Uh, had been driving it around for months at a time with the satellite literally in the trunk of his car. It was ready to go at any time. He, he could uh, drive it to the uh, launch pad down at Kennedy. They'd stick it on there, and we'd have our first Sputnik. Uh, but uh, they kept putting it off, putting it off, and putting it off. But uh, our first satellite it lasted about two months in the trunk of a car, because uh, we were more interested in making sure that we had the ability to uh, take a peek at what the Ruskies were doing uh, and didn't uh, kind of let them uh, have their uh, day in the sun, only uh, for us to have so many satellites uh, that uh, someone can hardly come out the front door where we can't see them in Russia. And now you know the rest of the story. Now you know the rest of the story uh, on this day in 1959 okay so first of all let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of these housing stocks um, they were just savaged yesterday on big gaps down uh, as I said to many people and I got a bunch of emails about it uh, my three-day rule on huge gaps down and that is if you do not uh, get a instant reversal the next day, I tend to look for more of the same. Now, with all the volume yesterday, I still suspect that Toll Brothers is going to retest the $40.20 low. That goes back into, what is that, uh, June 17th. Uh, it had three, uh, yeah, $3.66 million. Um, and it's kind of hard to come up with a scenario where that doesn't happen. Um, sometimes, though, you have to say that if everybody believes it, then it's problematic. I, it's very hard. What's the other one out there in the housing sector? Uh, let's go ahead and do this, because I do have a list of them here. Let's go back in here. Home builders. Where are my home builders? My homeboys. Okay, let's see how they're doing today. Uh, Mohawk Carpets, uh, one of uh, Warren Buffett's big to-dos, he's owned this for a long time, um, has broken and gone through the lows. Of course, they're the carpet and uh, floor manufacturer for new houses. Not surprisingly, this thing, and of course, it had a nice 10-year run higher. Uh, now, probably not so much. Uh, you've got a fairly big break today of a downtrend line. Uh, we'll see how the volume comes in, but it looks like it's going to be fairly significant. 
Uh, others in this same sector uh, are uh, Armstrong Worldwide in the uh, in the uh, flooring part. Uh, they look a little stronger off the lows, but uh, you still had a big day yesterday. Uh, you're going to retest the low in this one, 81.91, which is on September 6. See, now the volume, eh, volume's about the same as that low. Uh, on the positive side, uh, Hovenian, H-O-V, actually timely up a little bit today. But uh, I don't know if that's selling a whole, or saying a whole lot after it got uh, bludgeoned into the close yesterday. But uh, just hanging on by a thread on HOV. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we are at the start of what should be... Uh, any kind of notifications to folks on and uh, execution of margin calls. It'd be very interesting to see how much we had. We had some yesterday. And then, of course, the market on close. Uh, so we'll look at that. I had a question about Beezer on the last one. I think, you know, we're debating between three quarters and a 1% next Wednesday. Uh, my belief is that we're probably going to lean on the 1%. And I think you could see by next Wednesday, Beezer back down to uh, 10 bucks and nine cents. That low, or at least into the candle of that low on June 17th. It's very hard to see, uh, you know, does it take a couple of days up and down? Does it just smack down on the news next Wednesday? 
Yeah, I'd say the chances of getting into that candle are probably 80%. Uh, so pretty high. Um, now on the positive side, uh, we've seen a lot of the strongest stocks yesterday uh, that were in uh, uh, the uh, uh, solar side of the business. I think uh, energy itself uh, is getting ready maybe in the next 60 days to take a massive uh, leap higher. I wrote about it in the Tech Insider this morning and a possible play. Don't have a lot of volume today uh, in the follow through, but even yesterday in the worst day of the market in a year, um, it held pretty firm. So you've got good relative strength in some of these solars. Uh, SPWR, let's take a look at that one. SPWR. Again, a little lower yesterday, a little higher today, not a whole lot. Uh, certainly, this these aren't ones that are blowing apart. Uh, and if you just looked at these absent of knowing what the market did yesterday, you wouldn't probably think a great deal. Uh, TAN, the Invesco Solar ETF, has just been going sideways for seven days. So not much going on in that. Um, what's this one? E... MRK is the weakest one in this bunch, but that's not saying a lot. It's uh, oh, it's RK, KR. All right, there it is. We'll bring that up. Um, yeah, it's just coming down and testing the, but it's two dollar stocks. I don't know if I'd make a, a great deal about that. First Solar FSLR. If you can type. On this one, take a quick look. Now, this one, <laughs> I would probably be ringing the register on this. It's done nothing but go straight up. Back since June 15th, at $60.96 to $140. Bucks. Uh, and even yesterday really wasn't deterred much. But uh, you know what? You're probably going to get a fairly decent retrace on this one. And just a minimal retrace would take you back to 109.37. So that's uh, pretty much in there, maybe 112-ish. There's some fairly good support. And that wouldn't, that would just be an ABC on the way higher. But uh, we can look at that. Uh, okay, do I have some more emails here? Okay, we'll look at some other sectors and how they fared yesterday. Uh, to, to, okay, where are they at here? Um, okay. Now, here's some uh, stocks that really make their money on crack spreads. Uh, that's an old one there, isn't it? MPC. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, and, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't see much happening in here. You had a little bit of a gap down yesterday. Volume did pick up. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that if you saw that on any other day, other than the day when the Nasdaq lost five or six points a percent, you'd say much about it. Uh, yeah, a little weaker, but I think these things are getting close to the point where they're going to take off. Uh, VLO is another one. We want to take a look at that. It, kind of the same pattern in this one, uh, but it's just retesting the September 7th low. You got four and a half million shares there. You got about 2.9, so you want to see how the volume comes into that tomorrow. Uh, what else do we want to look at? Uh, the SMHs, right? So let me get my list here. Uh, the semis, and I got a sneeze. And I'm back from sneezing. Okay. Did I not have that list up here? I oh, know. I don't know why. I should have it. Let's go ahead and just do it from memory. Take a look at applied materials. 
again, these stocks uh, already had some weakness in them, uh, kind of priced in from not being able to sell into the Chinese market. Eh, you have a big gap down yesterday on volume. These things were probably going to retest previous lows anyway. So eh, for the most part, kind of sold uh, out a bit. But I still suspect we're going to see previous lows. In this case, the July 5th low at $82.67 is probably going to get retested. You have 89.03 as the last low. We're kind of hanging around those right now. I don't know if you can make a big deal about that. Uh, the usual suspects in the semis uh, for the producers, uh, for uh, AMD, eh, just a little doji out here. Maybe the halfway move. So that's 85.76, so $8 more. Hey, you could get down to 68 bucks if that's correct. Uh, Energy is about the same on the way up, same as on the way down. But you're close enough to the July 5th low now at 71.60. You're probably going to get that retested before you find some kind of meaningful low, uh, at least. Uh, NVDA. Take a quick look. We had a lot of volume yesterday. Just really kind of got into the previous low. You had more volume. You wanted to come in with 65 million shares in NVIDIA. You got uh, 71 and a half. Not the end of the world. Volume today is about 44 million shares so far. But uh, the energy off this top is fairly significant on NVIDIA. Okay, on the SMHs, Really, the volume isn't in, uh, incredibly horrible on the way back down, but certainly July 5th low on this one is 189.94. And I think you got a probably 80% chance you're going to retest that candle. And that was the 5th of uh, July. So we're starting to get a theme out here today. And uh, I don't know if there's going to be that much difference. I've uh, got a couple of questions, so we'll look at these here today. And by these, I mean uh, LNG shippers. Frontline uh, discontinues to go higher. Uh, I wouldn't chase it, but uh, certainly another good day. Volume is going to be more than it was on yesterday. Uh, TNK, there's always a bull market somewhere. Same kind of thing, TK10. Uh, now, you want to probably wait for the retrace. In this case, uh, I would look for the retrace to come back to around 25 bucks on this move, and you could still get it. Uh, so I wouldn't get too much. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, kind of hovering around unchanged on the S&P. Again, the NASDAQ uh, up 42, but that's 60% uh, uh, owned by six stocks. So not much of an index. A Dow 30, 95% institutionally owned. There's only 5% of all the shares in the Dow that you can actually buy. That's down 35 today, so I don't put a lot into that. Russell 2000, I think, is a lot more important. Hey, you got 2,000 stocks in that. Much harder to manipulate. Uh, got a quick uh, question on gold. We'll look at uh, Golar LNG, first of all. Uh, just uh, in a triangle pattern here, so I'm going to wait for it to break out one way or the other. If it broke down, uh, then either that day or a couple of days after that, I'd probably be looking at picking it up. Uh, i.e. busting out of a triangle pattern here since the high on August 25th. Not really looking too bad. So a uh, bunch of those stocks in LNG that uh, probably wouldn't look too bad. Uh, we do have uh, Tim Ord on tomorrow, so get your questions uh, into me for him tomorrow. Um, let's see. And... Uh, We'll make it. Uh, we'll make sure he gets them in time. He tends to spend about fifteen or twenty minutes on every stock, so it's not like uh, giving him one gives him enough time to do what he does. He's very long-term outlook on stuff, and you can't just look at it like I do and give kind of a uh, two-week, two-month, uh, one-week kind of idea of where this thing, where these are going. So uh, anyway, uh, tomorrow with Tim Ward, 877-927-6648. We have some more emails here. We'll take a look at. Anyway, on gold, you gap down yesterday. You got uh, about the same on no volume today. So, yeah, I mean, yesterday volume was not all that exciting. So that's actually a positive. Uh, really, the retest of 158. 03. That was the July 20th low. You got into it 7.4 million shares. Uh, yesterday, you got in with 6.5 million shares. Now, it's not going anywhere. And uh, with raising interest rates, it's probably not going anywhere. But when this thing does turn around, uh, probably fairly interesting. Uh, I mean, you had a monster move in gold in the 80s, and that came out of rising interest rates. Uh, in the late 70s and the first couple of years of the 80s. So, eh, will you have to wait a little while? You might. But uh, is it uh, doom and gloom out here? Well, certainly you don't have a lot of volume in these. But uh, let's uh, look at the GDX real quick and see what we have here. Gold is uh, rather la legendary for wiping everybody out right before it, the turn. So, I, you know, on a big move down, uh, I'd be much more interested in it than I am here. Although, like I said, on a chart basis, doesn't look all that bad, but wouldn't get me involved in it. 
Uh, certainly the GDX, uh, you're back to the support line, 2438. Uh, that goes back to July 25th. Uh, you broke through it with more volume, which indicates that generally you're going to at least come back and retest that low. That's $22.97. That's the September 1st low. Volume increased by about 10%. So you're probably at least going to come back in that low 24s to test it. You may even get into this gap down, which was kind of a little bit of a island or abandoned baby or island reversal on September 1st. But again, you want that volume to be light and then pop back into the trading range. All you had was a handful of days where all the shorts got ran. Now you want it to come back on light volume. Today's not a bad day, 13 million shares. Um, Again, on a lot of these, I want them to come back down, blow the three by three, have all the volume come out of it, and then the next move back above the three by three would probably be an indication where you'd want to look and see if you wanted to buy then. That's not a forecast, but a scenario. Okay, what else do we have here? Let me go to the emails. Okay, look at the EDZ, EDZ, which is the uh, third world bear market. Um, eh, kind of high hanging up at these highs. It's hard to figure that uh, if the uh, dollar uh, does something uh, that is uh, rather uh, amazing, which you can't get. Do I have it? Where do you, oh, I do have it here. Where's it at? There it is. That's, oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. And that's the wrong one. What am I looking for here on the dollar? There we go. Forex. Eh, 109.317. Yeah. Been kind of working back in these things, but what a move. Uh, back off the lows. It's hard to really get too excited about uh, what that is happening in that at the moment. To, to, let's take a look for Jim on the TLT. On kind of the off day, you have a little bit of counter trend rally here. Uh, very light volume today, more volume yesterday. I still suspect this thing's in a trend, and uh, there's a dollar. And bonds tend to be some of the best trending stuff over time. We've had the dollar a lot more manipulated than the bonds. But certainly, I continue to think uh, when we look at this that we're headed back down uh, to, where's those lows? Uh, I think it's 101 something, isn't it? In the TLT? Maybe it's much larger, longer ago than that. Eh, it was in there. I think it's 101 for the low. I'd have to go fish it out there. I don't think that, uh, I mean, you do have a little lighter volume than the previous low, so maybe some consolidation energy is stronger down here. Uh, we get a 1% move uh, next Wednesday. You're headed to 101 and probably uh, like a bullet on the TLT. Uh, question on UNG, as I said, uh, I'm thinking that uh, this is just the opening salvo and what's going to be a huge move in uh, energy for this uh, fall. A uh, variety of reasons I wrote about in the uh, tech, or not the tech inside, in the uh, newsletter this morning. Uh, there's some fairly nice one. Now today, are you up? Yeah. Is it on a light volume? It certainly is. Probably going to consolidate out here for a while until the weather starts getting colder. But uh, next real big move is a break above probably 33 or 34. And uh, once you get that started, uh, you can start thinking about some really rather large ABCs uh, that continue on. When we come back, we'll do that ABC in the UNG on the QT.
Melissa Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we uh, go into a close, uh, just some things to think about. Uh, see if we get any more market on close orders as we saw yesterday. Kind of drove the market in. I'm a big fan of waiting at least three days. Of course, uh, this is uh, quad witching on Friday. Uh, and normally on options expiration, you expect the unexpected. But I think we could probably say we probably want to expect the unbelievable this week because you can get it. Uh, there are a lot of cross currents. You might find a lot of people off sides, both up and down. Um, it's a tough one to use options to figure out because they are so uh, heavily hedged on these uh, quad witching days. Uh, but uh, beyond that, we get a pretty good read uh, into the rest of the fall after this uh, Friday. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, again, we've got market on close orders. We've got uh, a, probably a good idea. To, we want to watch and see what happens. Could you get a bounce on uh, a strike being settled on Friday, maybe. Um, if you're not uh, staying close to the uh, machines, I think you're probably getting into Friday and through the next week, you'll have to because uh, it's going to be a headline-driven uh, uh, market with maybe a minute or two minutes for you to make decisions either way uh, for the kind of moves we had on Tuesday. So I'm looking for alternative stuff. 
uh, as I said, I put it one uh, in the uh, newsletter this morning that won't be quite as affected by either interest rates uh, and or some of the other stuff that's being bandied about uh, and actually could do well and probably won't do badly if I don't get my projected move in what I think is going to happen. So uh, just be very careful. Have your stops in. You'll probably have to be wide or you're just going to get run over like a truck. So when you can, so you don't have days like we had yesterday. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.